So we're going to get started. Um, just note that if everyone hasn't seen that there's um, cider, cider donuts, and apples up there from Chapin Orchard, so feel free to pop up there at any point during the meeting. You can't hear me? I guess I, I can kind of try to stand in the middle a little bit more. I'm not sure that's helping there, but my actual voice, can you hear better as I'm here? All right, I don't want to have my back to anybody. Um, my name is Catherine Sonic, and I'm the Community Development Director for the Town of Essex. And I want to welcome you here this evening. So great to see so many familiar and unfamiliar faces. Um, so welcome. I'm going to be uh, reading something right here. So Josh Knox, who's the chair of the Planning Commission, um, can't make it tonight, but he wanted me to read some opening statements um, on behalf of him and the Planning Commission. So he says, I'm sorry I can't be here this evening uh, because I'm genuinely excited about the prospect of creating something new on Upper Main Street. My family and I travel around Vermont great, a great deal. And it's interesting to see what other towns and cities have done with their main streets and downtowns. A well-designed and well-built town center takes on a life of its own and becomes a destination. A poorly designed or poorly built town center will have an opposite effect. Essex is in a very unique position because in 2024, we have the chance to reimagine the vital aspects of our town center and I hope create a town center that will stand the test of time. Thank you again for coming and let's get to work. So I wanna add just one little statement. Um, so you're gonna be hearing uh, and seeing some, I think, pretty exciting things tonight and I'm not gonna get into those details, but one of the details that you might be wondering as we go through tonight is, okay, uh, how are we gonna pay for this? And we're not gonna talk about that tonight, but that will be something that we'll be talking about in the future. So we've actually have a consultant, um, Gail Henderson King, who is back here of Henderson King Consulting, uh, who was working on coming up with some different options for financing. So we're gonna see that come to play really in the next phase of the project. Um, so um, I will now hand this over to Maggie Connor, Maggie Connor from Stantec, who is our uh, main consultant working on this project. Um, maybe, can people hear me? Is this, is this clear? <laughs> All right, some of you may already know I've been um, in and out of cold land this week, so if my voice starts to go, I'll just, maybe, maybe I'll tap Chris in over here and see if he can finish up. Um, I'm here, I'm Maggie Connor, I'm a principal and senior urban designer with Stantec, with Stantec's Urban Places. Um, we're, a, we're a part of a huge engineering and architecture company, um, but we're the part that sort of cares about making meaningful places for communities. And so a lot of the work that we do is around um, planning with communities like yourself uh, to envision their future. And so for us, that's maybe one of the most exciting things about this project is thinking about how you really take this opportunity to reconceive a center for yourself. Um, and we think it's a fantastic opportunity and we hope that as we are starting to walk down this path um, this week that uh, we're maybe moving it in the right direction. And we also hope that every single one of you tells us if we aren't. <laughs> Um, just quick agenda for the evening, obviously, welcome, welcome. Um, we'll go a little bit over process and schedule just to kind of give you a sense of where we are in the whole project. We'll talk a little bit of what we've learned so far. <laughs> we'll talk a bit more about what we've been up to this week. <laughs> um, and then we wanna spend a pretty good chunk of time, this presentation is not long, or it's not intended to be long. Um, we want to spend a good chunk of time um, talking to you around some tables and stations that we've set up today. I think it's going to be easier to see some of the things in, in the live form than they're going to be to see on the screen. So if things are unclear up here at some point, you know, either 
wave your hand to ask a question, or we can also know that we can look in much more detail after the presentation. My intention here is to give you guys an overview of the discussions that we've had so far, and then we can get kind of into the thick of it um, in, our, in our more one-on-one -on -one discussions. Um, so tonight's goal, uh, to tell you a little bit about what we've completed, what we've learned, um, to present some site planning options, that's kind of where we are in this process, to get your feedback and really to encourage you all to stay involved. You know, I'm heartened. I see some faces of people who showed up at the last public meeting. I also see new faces. So who's, who's, who came to the last meeting? Yeah, about half of you. So that's great. So thank you to everybody. Um, for showing up tonight. We know it's not always easy on a weeknight to make time. Um, you guys probably have seen this slide then before. Uh, we, are, we are in a three-phase process. The first is where we try to learn everything that we can about a place. The second is where we start to test ideas, and you may see that's right about where we are. And the way we like to do that is in a workshop environment, so we come to the place where we're working, we get out the trace paper, paper and markers. <laughs> I'm just old enough to have not been taught on the computer, so I still draw. Um, and this is where it's really easy to change things. It's easy to try new things because it's just on paper. It's really cheap to change it now. It's going to be really expensive to do that in a year. So, so it's really important to have the conversations at this stage um, where it's easy to make changes and it's easy to adapt. Uh, we will be moving after this. Um, the plan after this week we will get the feedback that we get from you all. We are once again going to do an online survey, which will be up for probably the next month, let's say. Um, and then the idea is to compile all of this feedback, all of the survey feedback, and narrow down to a site plan recommendation. At the same time that we're working on that, the architects on our team are working on fleshing out the building programs, and we'll start to look at some party, some layouts, sorry, dorky architectural term, some general layouts for the buildings, um, and maybe perhaps what they could look like. And so the next time you see us, it'll be more about the architecture and less about kind of the big site plan stuff. So that's what's coming down the pike. Um, both last time and this time, we had a whole series of stakeholder meetings. Um, you know, we've managed to, um, we've had design team meetings, we've met with um, folks, from this, folks from the town, um, folks that represent each of the buildings that we know we have to accommodate here. We've met with some of your planning commissioners, your select board reps, um, some of the commissions. We've, we've, um, we've, we've held meetings with folks uh, for conservation, energy, housing, economic development, um, in the whole, in the whole like, um, and I'm probably there are probably even people that were missing here, but um, that's given us a pretty good picture, I think, um, of of the of the needs and the problems. Um, in addition to kind of the first engagement that some of you may have participated in. And then this one this week around site planning. We also had our architecture team was in two weeks ago now, two weeks ago to have a series of workshops um, with the library folks, with fire and rescue, and with um, uh, the various town uh, staff people to really talk more detailed programming about those buildings um, and really begin to understand and tour those facilities and see what's working today, what's not working today, um, and what could be improved. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna do probably a poor job, so Chris, you'll have to jump in, because I did not attend these meetings, but there were some common themes. Um, the first is just having room to grow. You know, I think as Essex Town continues to grow, this is certainly a part of the world that has growth demands on it. Um, we've heard a lot about the housing need um, in this part of uh, your lovely state, um, but also just how Essex continues to grow. 
Um, and the need for the fire station, the library, the town offices, for these services to adequately represent you, that there needs to be more space. Um, there's hope in the future for um, the fire station wants to be able to maybe go from a volunteer to an actual you know, permanent staff situation. The library has so many programs that they love to provide. They have zero space for storage and they literally have tetris that building. I actually would love to hire them for space planning because they're, they've been brilliant with what they have. Um, it's an absolutely sweet and lovely building. It has so much character, but how do we retain the things that we love about it and also um, make it so that it can better serve? Um, the town offices, I just had a lovely conversation with this gentleman up front. Um, you know, there's, we heard a lot about kind of lack of the conference rooms that are needed, meeting spaces. You know, I know just even as we've been working on this project, finding meeting spaces where we can, where we can meet, you know, fortunately you have these public facilities that work, but having them all in one place where they're programmable and you could, you know, actually have other functions going on as well. Um, having a variety of spaces, so it's not just a one size fits all. Um, I think, I think a town hall that is welcoming, that feels welcoming and open um, would be really lovely. Uh, and then finally, there's a community and recreation piece that we keep hearing about, um, sort of in addition to these things. Like, what do we, you know, what can we provide on this site given some of the natural features that it has, given how it will serve as a central location with these uses here? How do we continue to provide supportive uses around that that makes sense? Um, so things like places for bigger community events, outdoor places, outdoor festival spaces, um, recreation field space maybe, uh, senior center or some kind of, you know, these kinds of services. We heard about uh, needs for seniors. We heard about needs for child care. You know, so there are all these kind of ancillary uses too that could support a town center uh, that might make sense here. Did you okay? Oh, and, 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 and this is, this is going to resonate with all of us because if, if you, any of you are like me, it's true of your own homes, never enough storage space <laughs> for all of these people. Um, so public engagement, we already talked a little bit about this. We had several groups last time, 36 people signed in. It felt like more than that in the room, so I'm guessing some people didn't sign in. Um, we had over 190, uh, over 190 survey responses online, which I think is great engagement. Sometimes it's easier for people to engage that way. And we got great feedback um, in the table exercises around sort of strengths, weaknesses, um, some goals for the site. Um, online, we heard from folks things that, um, uh, what kind of place would they like the site to become in the future? We heard about um, the, the rating one there was a small town center, you know, to make it really feel like a hub. Um, the idea of physical character, we heard traditional, but not so, like that it should be a kind of mix. It should feel, you know, current and fresh, not dated. Um, and that the visitor experience should be simply a part of the town, which I thought was beautiful. We heard this a lot. This idea of being, I keep saying Essexy. I don't think it's gonna catch on. <laughs> I don't think it's catching on. However, <laughs> you know, that there is, that there is something about, there is something about this place that really does resonate um, and is really, um, uh, it is going to be important to meet the character of, of what we do. Um, so we've talked a bit about programmatic needs and wants. I think some of the issues that came through that I think are important to talk about, we heard a lot about traffic and congestion on Upper Main, and so I think just concern that as we continue to study this parcel, that we are also aware of what that means. You know, certainly we've got, we're adding a bunch of uses to this site. We're going to be adding new access points. Um, we also heard you guys are lovely, kind humans because your first concern that we heard from a lot of people were about the neighbors and the people that live immediately by it. Um, so I really appreciate that, you know, question about how do we properly kind of buffer and protect um, people who live right there. 
Uh, we did hear a lot about how are we going to pay for this. So I'm glad Catherine talked about the fact that there are some strategies. <laughs> this is not this is not completely pie in the sky. I did joke we are at a point of the process of any kind of design process where we're sort of dreaming a little bit. Um, so you know the the programs for the buildings are sort of you know growing and the you know the capacity of the site is sort of growing so you know we'll continue to rein that in as we get you know more refined on program as we start to do some cost some cost analysis for these things and really get a little bit more to the bottom of it um, we also heard um, oh just a concern about the nature the natural aspects of the site the wetland the natural the trees that are there existing and thinking about how we can um, how we can protect those and support them um, some of the goals that we heard um, this idea of promoting a sense of community I think it's really picking up on your existing sense of community and reflecting that in the spaces um, we heard about just improved accessibility to the civic spaces. Um, you know, this isn't, Essex isn't necessarily wired right now for walking and biking. I'm sure many of you do. Um, but we can always improve that um, or at the very least provide the opportunities on site um, to circulate. You know, you're right across the street from the Essex experience too. So if we could just get a few people to maybe walk across the street to do their shopping instead of getting in their car and parking twice, maybe we will have won. Um, and uh, that this really needs to, you know, the, the idea of sustainability being, you know, woven through this. So we've talked about this in many of our focus groups around, you know, how we do, how we can do kind of district, maybe it's district heating, maybe it's some way to capture water and, and, and be a little bit more sensitive on the land and think about the future as we do this. Um, and then finally, this should feel like a natural part of Essex, not something that has like landed in the middle of your, of your town. Um, you know, we just, we did a little, I'm very light on our, our site analysis in this, um, in, this, in this presentation so that we can get to some of the ideas. But um, it's kind of interesting when you look at the five minute walk, which really does cover most of the Essex um, Center across the street, the Essex Experience across the street and that Hannaford Center. Um, you know, you can imagine that as this develops on this side, that it may make you think differently about how the whole um, how the whole Route 15 um, frontage maybe transforms over time. So I think that's something that I'd love to talk to you all more about today as you look at some of these ideas and think about how that road could change. Um, you know, looking further, 10 minute walk, you know, you start to get to some of your neighborhoods and some of your homes. So imagine if these roads were a little, little more friendly or we had a good trail system in, you know, you might actually be able to access these pretty reasonably. Um, and so that's something to think about as we move forward. Looking a little bit more closely at the site, um, this is just a really quick diagram illustrating, first of all, you see in this lightest color up here are where the wetlands are. So that's the wetland and the required buffer. So yes, we have 30 some acres here. Uh, <laughs> by the time you take the wetlands out, it's a little less. Um, which Wei and Anu and I were finding frustrating this week, just FYI. <laughs> Somehow the site always shrinks as soon as you start drawing on it. Um, and then you can see here this, this uh, diagonal line that stretches across there, that's the sewer core. Um, that's sort of the limit of where uh, sewer access currently exists. Um, I haven't heard anything to suggest that that's changing anytime soon. So we used that as a pretty good hard fast um, limit to a, a good chunk of our um, ideas. Um, most of this frontage, the stuff up front is, um, is gonna be, is zoned for, for mixed use or for uh, planned unit development with some residential. Um, and what this sort of indicates here is something that we very much agree with which is that the intensity of development should be much lower next to the existing residences and then work its way toward the middle. Um, just, just driving around town, <laughs> taking pictures of some things we see as architects are want to do. Um, one thing that's really interesting to me looking at some of your um, more traditional building stock is that um, the building forms are very they're very simple in a, in a lovely way. I, do, I don't use 
architects, you have to understand things simple as the highest compliment. So, um, so I really do mean that in the best way. Um, I think what it, do, what it tells us is that there are some really good cues for the buildings that we're talking about. They don't have to be complicated. They just can be elegant and sit on the site. And I think they really represent this kind of relaxed, um, in touch with the ground and this kind of agrarian history here that I think is really um, unique and lovely and I think something to be celebrated. Um, what you will see in these back in one of our stations uh, after, we, after we break here and start getting into the feedback section is that we started to think based on some of the things that we see around, we've started to think about um, open space, public spaces, um, and different kinds of things that we can include. Um, and so some of the things that we talked about, sorry, the slides are so light, you guys. Um, the projector's a little blown out, but we have them in hard copy. Um, we look at sort of public realm spaces, so the idea of like bigger town greens and festival spaces along top. We heard a lot about the desire for a public market, um, some kind of farmer's market that could exist maybe once a week here. Um, we also are very interested in these natural systems here and the idea of community gardens. We heard from a lot of people this desire to bring food to your landscapes um, and we think that could be a great way to enhance this town center. And then finally thinking about some of the ways that we can weave sustainability through the development itself with rainwater harvesting, solar panels on parking areas, um, geothermal and other kind of district uh, services. And then we started to look at just some precedents for town offices or town hall buildings. Um, you know, you can, we're in New England. <laughs> There are so many great examples. Um, but I think what's interesting about each of these, while we have different styles, different levels of formality, they all sort of have this kind of welcoming, celebratory sort of feel to them. Um, some way of saying, hey, this is, this is where you come speak to your officials. This is where you come speak to your staff. Um, and I think it could be something very, you know, to be very proud, to invoke community pride. Um, same with the library, you know, thinking of libraries, especially modern libraries today, are really kind of a community center. People use them that way. People are using them as co-working spaces. People are using them as resource centers. You know, your library here is running a lot of programs, educational programs. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities to engage here. Um, and so the buildings should be reflective of that as well. Um, and then finally, for fire and rescue, you know, this is, this is a real workhorse of a building. You know, we've got a, the, the trucks have specific needs. They have turning radii that they need to meet. We gotta be sure that people, that your volunteer firemen can get there quickly, that they can get out and serve the community. Um, it, it doesn't mean that they can't be fun too. They can be lovely buildings. Um, obviously in some of the downtime, they've got the coolest machines. So, um, you know, I think the proximity to a town center or to a town green, I think is a great opportunity for education and for promoting um, that vital service. Um, some other development that we've talked about. So this gets a little bit into maybe potential future funding for the property. Um, we don't need, well, let's be clear, we could use as much of the property as, as we are given, but um, the, the buildings themselves, the services that we've talked about, don't have to take up the full 30 acres. And so there are, there is going to be space for additional development and additional program here. Um, and so this is part of the question. You'll see some ideas here, but certainly let us know if we've missed something. But there are other things that this could be up to and including um, everything from recreation and community services to, uh, to new development, to housing. We heard a lot about a housing need, specifically senior housing need and affordable housing need. And I think there's an opportunity to include those here as well. Um, and so these are just some examples of how housing could be incorporated, looking at different scales of housing that might be appropriate here. All right. With, are you all still with me? Okay, so we came into this week uh, having started to just let our pencils go for a walk on the site, and we had come up with three sort of uh, general diagrams. Don't worry, they're gonna get bigger. <laughs> 
This is just a teaser. Um, and we had looked at ways to organize the property around a public space uh, and really thinking about this idea of a, of a classic town green sort of where we started. So that, op that option one, a classic town center, that's what we were thinking of. Classic square, you have the buildings arranged around it, and then supportive uses going out from there. But as we started to look at the, at the property, we thought there are some other ways that we could form this and some other ways that we could think about how these buildings live and work together. And so I'm gonna walk you through three that we did. Um, like I said, there are a myriad of options, but I think there are some nuggets in each one of these that'll be good to talk about. So again, first, starting with um, kind of our classic town center. Um, here's uh, what we started with was looking at 15 is here. Old Stage Road runs there. Uh, Lost Nation running across the top here. Um, and we have these three access points to the site that you'll see uh, through most of these diagrams. Um, one at Billy Butler, one more or less at the middle of our site, and then one potential sort of m more right in, right out access to old stage road is what we would call it. Um, and so this looked at a central green space. And so as we started to look at building footprints and parking for each of these buildings and um, other things that could exist on the site. This is what this evolved into, which was you'll see the fire station located here um, with its servicing here. What's interesting about having its access directly to 15 is that the building itself also kind of shields um, the adjacent buildings from the siren sounds a little bit. You'll still hear them. Um, but there would be a central entrance here, um, adjacent to which you get a town square, um, which is framed by the town hall, a multi-purpose building, which would have kind of shared, um, like a, a room like this almost, you could imagine, with meeting spaces that could kind of be shared between the town offices and the library. There was a lot of overlap in some of their program. So the idea that this would be programmable and a really active building. Um, with a library here up at front, uh, we had identified, you know, some of those additional services like child care or elder care. Um, so maybe there's a service provider that could be there. We looked at some senior housing up just off of a spine road that comes through the property, works its way back down to Billy Butler. And then um, with around the wetlands, the idea that you get this kind of meandering wetland park um, and trail system. And in this case, you know, working way back to the sewer core, this would be a couple of things. Um, first of all, we're showing here maybe actually a rec building, uh, if there was a need for some kind of indoor gym or a bubble, you know, kind of tensile structure that could be um, a winter thing. Um, some playing fields on the dry part <laughs> of, of the land back there. But the idea too is that something like this, like we're showing it with that rec building, but it could also be held for future expansion to municipal services. So the other thing that we heard a lot about this week was not wanting to plan everything today and then not have room when these places need to expand. So in each of these plans, we've given a little bit of thought to where um, buildings could expand or program could expand. Um, and so if we look a little bit closer, just at this main, um, the main green space, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. We've got this entrance coming in off of 15 that can kind of terminate at like a little, um, a little gazebo or some kind of shelter at the wetland, which I think could also be a lovely place, you know, to hold family events and, um, and things like that. And then we did, we've done little sketches. These are real quick guys. These were all de developed this week. So, um, but a little aerial sketch of what that could look like. Imagining that green with a farmer's market in it, the fire station on that side, and your town buildings curling around it. So that's option number one. Second option um, was really pulling on this green spine. And the idea here was thinking about that natural system and how you could bring it all the way down to 15 so that there was more of a connection uh, between the, the wetlands 
and the, the sort of natural environment and uh, your front door, so to speak. And so in this one, what we really looked at was an alternative where we had a sequence of small spaces that got you sort of directly to this natural park system. Here, the library sits at the corner with the town offices here. They're kind of shared multi-purpose facility often in this corner here, or actually, yes, and then um, with parking there. So the idea that that space could also then kind of spill out into this natural system. So you could imagine it being used for any of a variety of events. Um, the fire station is still here. Um, in this case, looking at this being almost the dividing line between the municipal part of the site and then sort of potential other development. And so in this case, looking at a development that could be senior housing that could have, you know, perhaps some assisted living and independent living, um, that you could have a building here that could be used for things like childcare or for some ancillary um, town services that could be on the ground floor of a mixed use building. Um, you know, one of the things that we're sensitive to is not wanting to compete with the retail and the shops that are over in Essex Experience. But you could imagine, you know, maybe a small cafe or a little restaurant or something like that in that place as well. And so if we look a little bit closer here, you can kind of see more the form of this space. So here in this case, this would be a smaller lawn or a smaller green at your entrance. Um, you could still program this space. You could still have some market there. But the idea in this one is really that more of that function could be happening back in this space where we could provide more parking um, and you'd have a little, it'd be a different feel, right? So instead of a formal green, a more relaxed kind of natural environment. And then here is an image of what that would look like. Again, a little easier in the actual physical space, but you see this almost boulevard feel of this entry sequence with your town hall and library on that side and supportive uses over here. And then, the third option. In this case, we had actually looked at, you know, this was thinking about how we kind of, again, do this division between municipal services on one side and any potential development on the other. Um, as we started to look at the physical building footprints and the amount of land they took up, <laughs> we realized that this was not necessarily a viable option as we looked in more detail. And this happens, this is why, again, we do it on paper. <laughs> um, but what was really interesting is that in a lot of the conversations we had this week, um, some of your neighbors had some wonderful ideas and some wonderful thoughts um, about things that maybe we needed to look at again. And one of them was really thinking about the approach to the site from 15 coming this way, you know, which is interesting. I'm an outsider, I'll admit it. I've always approached it coming here. <laughs> And so thinking about how this is for the bulk of, of folks in the town and how they would approach it. So I thought that was a really strong um, thing to consider. And then the second thing that we heard a lot about was, um, was whether that intersection at Old Stage in 15 was maybe an opportunity for us to think about that being a front door. So I thought, hey, let's, let's try it out. Um, and so this one, what we've done, couple of things to deal with the kind of traffic and congestion. We looked at the idea of a traffic circle or in this case, a traffic lozenge, I think we'll call it, um, in order to pick up the new road into the, into the sort of town center um, and the, in the flanking intersections. Um, what was really fascinating to me about this is that when you get off of 289 and you're coming down the road, What's the thing you see in the distance? It's these, it's these townhouses all the way up here. That's what you see and it's, it's almost like it's right in front of your face. And so the idea that you actually could create something like that with some kind of vertical monument in the middle as the thing that greets um, people coming into your town, uh, we thought could be really powerful. 
Similarly, if you're coming this way on 15, what we did was we looked at a town green, but we oriented it toward that intersection um, so that you both get the view of it looking this way as well as the view of it looking this way. So we thought that was kind of interesting geometrically, and you still get a pretty good size open space there. Here it is in a little more detail. Um, with the library at the head, the, in this one we're showing a reading garden associated with the library. Um, which is also could also be expansion space if they needed additional building space. Um, the multi-purpose and um, town hall buildings, again, with some expansion space for the town hall as well. And then this one could look like this. So this is kind of the view over 15 looking into this green space here with a bit of a town, uh, with a bit of a farmer's market there. Um, and you'll see as we as you go around. Oh, sorry. Um, you'll see as you go around to each of the stations. Also, where we've shown sort of community gardens can be um, distributed throughout. Some walking trails and paths. Um, they'll be easier to see in the detail. So that's where we're at. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we've got. Um, photo pages set at these back two tables here, so that's one station. Uh, and then we have three stations up here for each of the plans. So we're gonna ask everybody to move <laughs> through. Um, what I'm gonna suggest is, how about if we think of like, maybe the back two tables or so could start at the photos and then maybe about a 10 or so of you over here on this side could go to station one. Do you want to point to it? Yeah. And then like my middle band of folks here can maybe start at the second one, which maybe we want to, can we pull those down actually at tables and put a little more distance between them? And then the folks on the left side of the room can go to the third station. And what we'll do is we'll call maybe every 10 minutes or so, just kind of let you know the time and we'll, we'll kind of rotate our way through. Because what we have is we have post-it notes and dots at each of those stations. We'd love for you to take a look at the photos and give us your feedback on what, what feels all right, what doesn't. Um, similarly, we can walk you through in a little more detail of the plans and really show you what you're looking at and get your feedback on those as well. So. That's our plan for the rest of the time. We'd love to hear from you. Are there any general questions before we break? Yes, sir. To come back. This is the second meeting I've done with Stantec. It's all about happy, happy, touchy, feely, all this great stuff. But there's no, there's no substance of what the community thinks about your plans. It's all about your visions, your dreams, what you see, but I don't see much coming from the community. You just talk and you fluff over everything, you make everything sound so pretty and so nice, but that's not really the way it is. There's a lot of people in this community, and the way you're handling this, it doesn't allow any of these people to have any say in where you're going with this crazy master plan of things. Okay. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I'm feeling strongly about this. I you're, up there, you're up there painting rainbows and unicorns and this kind of crap, I'm sorry. But this is what you're doing. You're a unicorner. You're putting up, oh, this, and, oh, that. But what about dollars and cents? Mm -hmm. What about what people in this community really feel? Mm -hmm. You're handling all the dialogue. You're not allowing any other dialogue to come forth. And I'm seeing this a second. I went to the one at the end of Essex. Same way. Same way. You're not saying, would anybody like to comment on this? Would anybody from the community like to have some input? It's like you're driving all the input, all of you. Stand tech and like happy, 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 happy. Okay. okay. So okay. we are we are stationed at each of the stations. So it doesn't allow the public to hear what other people in the community are saying. Okay. You're driving everything that gets said. Nobody, you're not allowing anybody from the community, whether it's positive or negative, to say anything about what you are presenting. Okay. Would it help if we did a report out at the end? I'd be happy to. 
Let's do that. What is a report out at the end? Let's do that. You so, lost me of that, and I'm not a stupid person. No, no, no. At the end, here's what we'll do. Right before we break, so we're gonna we'll we'll do the, we'll engage at each of these stations because this allows us to hear from people individually or in is groups. Like last, last time you, you did it table by table. Last time, last time, yeah, last time we did it table by table. This is a little different because we're gonna be engaging with each other and in and so. in groups at each of these stations. And what we'll do is we'll stop at, we'll stop at, we'll say about 8.15, 8.20. And what we'll do is we'll do a summary at each station. And everybody who has given their feedback will have the opportunity to tell us if we heard you correctly. The community. No, no, we're going to do it as this group. So what we'll do is if everybody will stick, stick with us until 8.30, we will, we'll call time at 8.20. We'll come back to our tables and we'll do a report from each station so you can hear what people have said. And you tell us if we're getting it wrong. I know that I, yes, I am an optimist. I am the first person to admit it. Um, that's <laughs> that's why I'm a designer. <laughs> but, um, but yes, we, I, I take that to heart because it really is, it's actually important to me that our plans become, are a part of a community and that we've heard folks, please. Just to counter John, John, I oh. appreciate your opinion. Um, I don't feel that way. That wasn't my experience. I went to the first one. Okay. Plenty of opportunity for input. Um, plenty of opportunity to input with survey. Hopefully people feel that way too, and I'm not alone in that. Hopefully, John, that you, you know, are specific about what your plans are. Well, what, what you hope for. Hopefully you're specific about what you're looking for, because this is an opportunity to do that. I hope everyone here does that as well. I do not feel not heard. So I just want to put that up. <laughs> I do. I feel not hurt. Yeah. All right. Well, it's clear. <laughs> because this whole plan, the select board picked this property because they had ARPA money to spend. Now, ARPA money was COVID relief money, as I understand it. If I'm wrong, somebody please correct me. And they had to spend it or they're going to lose it. So they picked an absolutely horrid property because half it is wetlands. It's, it's really a junk property. I have spent my whole life in soil science and knowledge of soils and the way things work. Nobody in here is going to disagree with me about that. That land is junk. It's all heavy soil, it's clay soil, it's poorly drained soil. You all want community gardens and greens and da 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 da. Okay, but it's terrible soil. Chuck, you know soil. And I think if you really would think about it, it's not good ground there. The whole back's wet. It's never been good ground. So. Thank you, John. No, so here's, here's what I'm gonna propose so that everybody has a chance to give their thoughts. Let's go ahead and break to the tables. We'll call time. Um, we really would love to hear from all of you. We'll meet back at 8.20 and we'll report back on what we've heard, okay? And you and I can keep talking about that. All right, thank you so much. <laughs>